Welcome to Workforce Central, the official podcast of the National Association of Workforce Boards. Stay tuned as we explore the latest resources, thoughts, and trends in workforce development. And now, here's your host, Ron Painter. Welcome to Workforce Central, the official podcast of the National Association of Workforce Boards from Washington, D.C. I'm Ron Painter, your host. Doug Foresta is at the controls today, and it's my pleasure to welcome Kathleen McLaughlin, who is Walmart's Chief Sustainability Officer and President of the Walmart for Foundation. Kathleen, thanks for joining me. Oh, well, thanks, Ron. It's my pleasure to be with you here today. And prior to getting to, to Walmart, a long career with, with McKinsey, looking at some of the same industry, looking at retail and, and uh, both strategies on the ground, but also their connection to their communities. That's right. Yeah, I was at McKinsey for, gosh, about 20, 23 years. Uh, I spent most of my time working with retailers on their strategies and organization plans and operations, uh, trying to help retailers serve their customers better. Uh, and then I also spent a fair bit of time leading McKinsey's social innovation practice, which is really about the role of the private sector working with public sector and civil society to drive social change. I want to come back to that question, but you have some things going on with the Walmart Foundation right now that 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 we want to talk about. Tell me about what what you've got going on. Yeah, um, we, well, we do. It was about a year ago in D.C. In, in February, actually, a year ago, where we announced jointly with Walmart an initiative, the Retail Opportunity Initiative, that has two big parts. So one is the company and what Walmart is doing to transform the associate experience and help them accelerate to higher positions of authority and pay. And there's a lot we've done over the last year, uh, you know, about wages and upskilling and scheduling practices. And we'll talk about some of that today. Uh, and the second part is the Walmart Foundation, where we're trying to extend what we're doing to the broader retail sector and uh, help clarify what the career pathways are, not only within retail, but starting in retail, moving out into adjacent sectors and help accelerate skill acquisition and advancement for people. That is a good reminder. We are backstage before before you're going to speak to Forum 2016 at, at lunch. So we're, we're we welcome you for the uh, for the dual conversation now and, and when you go out to the to the stage. Um, I've been to Bentonville. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not call Walmart offices ostentatious. Uh, <laughs> no, not by any stretch. <laughs> not by any stretch. Um, you, you referenced the announcement that that you made last year. And I really have to say, I, I got to be a part of, of that room in the announcement. And what really struck me was when people were pushing you all about the metrics, how are you going to gauge all of the, you all talked about the fact that if the people who work for it, if your associates had a better connection, felt more engaged with Walmart, that the customer would have a better experience and you all were confident that, that you would be just fine. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you guys, if you, if you mm -hmm. can tell me yeah. how you got to that moment that day. Sure. Well, um, you know, Walmart has always been a mission driven customer focused company since day one. You know, when Sam Walton founded Walmart 50 years ago now, uh, the idea was to bring affordable products to people all over the country. And, and that's what, that's what we do. And now we've expanded to eight countries and you know, 10,000 <laughs> stores and hundreds of millions of customers, but it's the same simple idea. And to do that effectively, associates have always been the bedrock of, you know, it's, it's been our secret sauce. I'm like to say, our people make the difference. That's always been true. And the world has changed around us. It's a different landscape now with omnichannel, you know, we've got a very robust online business and we're integrating digital and physical in our own customer service proposition. And the uh, jobs landscape in America has evolved to the point where one in four jobs, according to the National Retail Federation, are in retail. So it is a massive sector. For us to be able to serve our customers best today, we need associates that are more engaged than ever. And so for us, it was a pretty simple equation to say, let's take a look at what is the experience we're offering our associates? 
How can we help them develop and grow and be more engaged and thrive within our own business? And, you know, at some point, if they leave our business, they leave the better for it. You know, they learn while they earn with us. And that's going to result in better service to the customer. You know, we have a scorecard that we call clean, fast, and friendly. And we keep track of what I, our customers... I got to see that when I was... Uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we got to visit behind the scenes of a couple of the stores when I was down there. It was great. Great visit. So we track that every day in every store. And, you know, we've seen those scores go up markedly in the last year since we started investing more in our people. Wow. So we know, and, and, you know, most retailers know this, that there is a direct correlation between associate engagement and customer satisfaction. And then that leads to things like better sales, uh, better repeat visits, better basket size, and also better, even things like better on shelf availability, which also translates into better sales. So this is really a virtuous circle. So Kathleen, this is, but this isn't just about you at Walmart. This is, this is a much broader, as I understand it, this is a much broader engagement with other people in the retail, other companies in the retail space. Yeah, that's, that's right. Um, you know, at Walmart, we are always in the midst of transforming our business to make it better and better. And as part of that, we're trying to transform the systems that we rely on so that everything we're doing is creating sustainable value for the long term. And that's true whether you're talking about the sustainability of our products and the supply chains that create them. You know, as, you, as you may know, we do a lot of work around you know, everything from emissions reduction and supply chain to uh, moving to zero waste in our operations and in supply chains to food security to deforestation and preventing that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that people understand the extent to which Walmart uh, is involved in, in those sustainability issues. Yeah, and if we had a lot more time, I'd tell you a lot more <laughs> about those. And so, you know, it's the same when it comes to economic opportunity. Um, you know, we have a couple of assets that position us to make a real difference, not only for our own people, but for the broader, uh, you know, employment systems and really the, the economy more broadly. So it's our jobs and our purchase orders. So, you know, for us to invest in our own associates is one thing, but if we want to really create a system of talent in this country that will benefit us and other businesses as well as communities, uh, then, then we need to go broader than our own associate base. So what we are aspiring to do is change the workforce development landscape in the retail sector more broadly. So the company is focused on our own associates and improving wages, upskilling, scheduling practices, etc. While through the foundation and also Walmart, we're trying to invest together working with other employers, education providers, government agencies, technology companies to change career pathways in retail and into adjacent sectors to improve pre-employment training, to improve career advancement so that we have a broader system a broader talent pool uh, of people who can come into retail and get a good start, but then earn while they learn and move up to better you know, positions over time. That's going to help our company. It's going to help other retailers. It will serve customers better. And, and it will certainly you know, improve the lives of millions of job seekers and incumbent workers. Tell me a little bit more about the role of the, the foundation, some of the work that, that you all have underway. Uh, beyond retail opportunity or, or within this program? In, within this program. So um, this program is $100 million over five years in grants. So it's the philanthropic investment. And we're focused on a few different strategies within it. And again, all uh, in, in uh, with the aim of improving career pathways and, and accelerating advancement for frontline workers. So one is, um, first of all, just clarifying what are the career pathways in retail and adjacent sectors and uh, creating a shared vision among employers about what those pathways are. Uh, so what does it mean to have a starting job at a Walmart or a Hilton Hotels or a Starbucks? What does it mean to be a department manager, a store manager, uh, and so on? And being very clear about what are the skills that are required to move up that ladder and which skills are held in common because most of them are quite common across the sector. And, and Walmart is a company, I think I saw the, the statistic, if I'm not mistaken, it's well over half of your senior management, including your CEO, mm -hmm. who came into Walmart as, as an hourly employee. Right. Yes. So 
90% of our store managers, for example, started as hourly employees. And our store managers are running significant businesses. They are. So, you know, they're earning up to $170,000 a year. That's a good job. And 75% of them started as hourly wow. cashiers or cart pushers, right? And they work their way up. So we want to create more success stories like that, help people move up more quickly, uh, and also be in a good position to go into other sectors that have similar you know, requirements. So clarifying the career pathways, it sounds, you know, should we all already know what those are? Well, no, we don't. And there isn't agreement across the industry. So that's a starting point. Then the second strategy is around pre-employment training and improving pre-employment training so that when people come in and get that first job, they stick. They've got what they need to thrive in that job and not churn out. You know, retail is a very high turnover industry and we're trying to reduce that. Step yeah, forward. because not just for you, I mean, no, no, it's turnover in general. Right. I don't know that we always recognize is expensive for yeah. for a business, regardless exactly. of of the uh, of the industry. It's expensive for the business, and it's expensive for the, the person, the associate, sure the worker, is. right? Starting so, all over again, right? So that's that's a second one. Uh, a third strategy is around career advancement. Uh, so that's incumbent worker training um, and, and helping folks acquire the skills to move to that next position. You know, we recognize that in today's world, people can't necessarily quit their job and go to night school or back to school. So how can we help people earn better while they learn? Can we use technology in new ways? Can we have better employer practices? So a lot of our work is trying to create best practices and, and you know, certainly through Walmart, but the other companies we're working with, what are the best practices and can we share them so that the coaching and training of people on the job is much better and helps them move up more quickly? Let me come back and ask you more about that. Let me step out half a second and remind folks that you're listening to Workforce Central, the official podcast of the National Association of Workforce Boards from Washington, D.C. I'm your host, Ron Painter. Kathleen McLaughlin, who is the Walmart's Chief Sustainability Officer and President of the Walmart Foundation, is, is sitting with me today at Forum 2016. Um, Kathleen, this the intersection that we were just talking about with, with businesses, this is something that you spent a lot of time at McKenzie looking at is where does the business intersect with the, with the community? And what's the, what is that connection? What's the, the role? Can you tell me more about how you see that, that role? It's part of what attracted right. you right to, to Walmart. Yeah. It's the reason that I went to Walmart. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, Walmart is a really, purpose-driven company and the leadership uh, team approaches strategy and, and the operations of the business in this way, uh, meaning we can create value not only for our business, but the communities that we're part of and the value we create for the communities not only helps the business, but what we do for the business helps the communities. So it really is this idea that some people are calling you know, shared value. Um, last year, I don't know if you saw Fortune Magazine came out with a new list you know, they always have lists, yes. right? Fortune 500 and <laughs> most powerful women and so on. Well, their new list uh, was called the Change the World List. And it profiled 50 companies that are transforming systems in the world, social and environmental systems, through their core business. And Walmart ranked number four wow. on that list. Um, and so, you know, the reason that Fortune did that and, and the reason Walmart's so focused on this is more and more there is a realization that companies need to invest in the systems they rely on and create long-term value, sustainable value for those systems so the companies can thrive and, you know, as a society, we can thrive. So, you know, Walmart uh, for, for many years now has been focused on three priorities in that arena. So one is uh, creating economic opportunities. We've been talking about for associates and for jobs, but also with our purchase order. It's a really powerful tool for small business development, and there are many ways we do that around uh, around the world, women's economic empowerment, local manufacturing, and so on. You've made a big commitment to, to manufacturing in the, in, in the U.S., correct? In, yes. As part of all of this. That would be another example program. We've committed to source $250 billion incrementally uh, from U.S., uh, businesses for our U.S. business. That's a B, right? That's a billion. billion. Yeah. Right. Okay. At cost, right? And so... <clears throat> We're used to in Washington. We, with the right. dollars and cents, we sort of, that passes us by, but billions gets our attention. Well, it's here. one of the reasons I went to Walmart is the, is the scale opportunity. It and is it's, a, yeah. you know, it's one of the reasons I'm so excited about our uh, retail opportunity program is the chance to really make a difference in community 
countries at scale. So yeah, the manufacturing program, you know, again, it creates value for Walmart. Our customers love to buy locally in local markets uh, and it reduces transportation miles, which is great for the environment. It lowers emissions. It creates jobs in our country in those factories, right? So there are a lot of multiple, very synergistic benefits. So opportunity is an important one. Uh, our second big area is sustainability of our product supply chains. And that's all along the chain, social and environmental issues. And, you know, as I mentioned, that includes emissions reduction, waste reduction, uh, preventing deforestation, conserving water. We're looking at worker dignity in terms of not only livelihoods, but, you know, e even things like forced labor working with others to try to get a handle on that way back in supply chains. Um, food security, big one, how do we feel, you know, feed the world. And then our third area is community. Um, one is disaster relief. We're in 10,000 communities around the world. And really ever since Hurricane Katrina, we, we've recognized we're on the ground. We can play a big role in times of disaster. And then just community development more broadly. So these are all programs where the business uh, collaborates with our foundation and our giving portfolio to accelerate improvements against social and environmental issues more broadly. So Kathleen, I, I want to thank you for, for taking time out and, and sitting down with us before you, you talk to uh, a few of our friends who are out there uh, in, in the audience today. Closing, closing thoughts on what Yes, in a way, what this means, what this initiative means to, to you. You mentioned you came to Walmart because of the ability for, for scale. Um, this is part of your, your drive. This is going to make a difference. Yeah, I have a, a personal passion for working with businesses to help them recognize this opportunity to create shared value. And I think in all of us, we all have in our family histories, I think, you know, anybody growing up in America, we've got stories of family members and maybe not too distant. Maybe it's like, you know, our, our parents or our brothers or sisters who have benefited greatly from enhanced opportunity. Um, you know, I, I think about my grandfather who worked in a coal mine and sold vegetables to make extra money right on the side. And we all have these stories. And so for me personally, this, this whole arena of opportunity and helping people get a chance to get that first job, to get the skills they need to move up in life. People who might not have had the opportunities I had growing up, you know, for a great education, I didn't have to worry about these things. Creating those opportunities for people, um, that really drives me personally. And I, I think, you know, this opportunity to collaborate with others like workforce boards, who are so embedded in communities across the country, who really understand the local landscape and can can help connect employers to education providers to incumbent workers and job seekers to be part of that is very meaningful to me personally. Well, on behalf of the, the boards, we appreciate your, your confidence in, in the, uh, in the local boards and the work that we do. Kathleen McLaughlin, Walmart's chief sustainability officer, president of the Walmart foundation. Again, thanks for sitting down with us. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Ron. You've been listening to Workforce Central, the official podcast of the National Association of Workforce Boards from Washington, D.C. I'm Ron Painter. Thank you, and we'll see you again.